All right, um, let me start by taking a look back at the never to be forgotten year of last year. That was the year of tax reform. It was a year of government shutdown. It was a year that not only will we be launching and scaling TurboTax Live as a platform, it's the same year that we launched and scaled our TurboMint platform as well. It's the same year we had a CEO change. Um, it, was, it was quite a year. And when I look back at last year, look at our report card. Just a simple reflection of how do we do during such a time of, I'll call it, uh, turbulence. So our goals were to extend, to transform, and to disrupt. First, we wanted to extend our lead in DIY. Extend our lead in DIY. What that means, did we grow the category? Did we grow our share? Did customers love their experience and decide to um, stay with us? So did we improve our retention? And fundamentally, in a year like tax reform, it's so important that we grow our filing, particularly our totally free filing, did we achieve that? And the answer is yes to all those, despite the year that we went through. In terms of transforming the assisted tax category, again, I mentioned we scaled our virtual platform. You know, we feel good about that. We, we delighted customers and our pros on both sides of that platform. As a matter of fact, we actually grew the number of new filers by 3x that came from a prior year assisted tax method. Strategically, that's a very important point because that tells us that we're on the right track to transforming the assisted category and penetrating the TAM that is there. Now, what about disrupting consumer finance? As I mentioned, we scaled our virtual consumer finance platform, which is a platform that connects consumers to partners so that they can improve their financial health. We introduced two and a half times the number of marketplace offers. We've grown our monthly active users now to four million. And in fact, we have over 37 million consumers on our consumer finance platform. All that was achieved last year. We feel very good about what that means on the path that we're heading. The scoreboard ultimately comes down to, did we deliver the revenue growth? If you recall, we raised our expectations around revenue growth and we delivered 11% revenue growth as well as 7% um, TTO customer growth as well. So pretty successful year during very turbulent times. And from there, that's the last I wanna do of looking back at that year. We survived it and we're pretty proud of our results. The rest is gonna be looking forward, looking forward. So first of all, when we look forward, it always starts in the same place. And you've heard it time and time again today, it starts with our customer problems. You know, it's so easy to, to read, and particularly for us in this room, to hear our customer problems and not truly relate to the severity of those problems. When we talk about making ends meet, maximizing your tax refund, trying to save more, trying to pay down debt, trying to improve your financial health. That sounds, I mean, it sounds like pretty meaty problems. But when you sit down in a customer's home, as we routinely do, and you, in their environment, and you hear their stories about what keeps them up at night, the things that they worry about, the things that they wish for, what's getting in the way of their success and their happiness, it's truly compelling and we know that we have an opportunity to make a difference in their lives. That's why falling in love with the problem and not the solution is so important to us. You know, one example of this is that one mindset change that we've gone, um, undergone recently is after 30, over 30 years in the tax business, figuring out how to maximize the customer's tax refund. What we've discovered through the same process that maximizing the tax refund isn't just about making it bigger. It's also about how do you maximize the impact that refund can have on their financial life. And this is when you start to realize the opportunity to follow the customer problem has taken us to an area of growth where we can extend our impact from tax to actually beyond tax. Now that, we find that inspiring, which brings us to how we in the consumer group support into its mission of powering prosperity around the world. What we fight for every day is we fight for financial freedom from our customers, not just by doing tax, but moving beyond tax. 
in the way that we're going to achieve that bold goal is becoming an AI-driven expert platform, which you've heard a lot about. It's the key to the success in how we can make a dent and make an impact in the lives of our customers. Now, that platform sits on top of an amazing ecosystem, an ecosystem that starts, if you look around the one or two o'clock position, with 50 million unique filers. These are filers that we have amazing relations with. And that relationship is expressed digitally in the form of data. And that data is something that is our customers. And our data stewardship principles and our focus on building trust are key for us to think about how can we help tap into this ecosystem and drive amazing breakthrough benefits for our customers. Those 50 million unique filers also give us $82 billion of opportunity to put a bigger refund in our pocket. $82 billion of refunds we're responsible for. Beyond that, it's not just the tax business. Our payroll business is an ecosystem where we're actually delivering payroll and paychecks to over 14 million um, workers. And those paid workers amounts to $180 billion, $180 billion of paychecks. That sits in our ecosystem. We also have over 600,000 tax experts and pros that serve in the assisted market and generate tremendous benefit and tremendous value to both the accountants as well as the customers those accountants serve. And then finally, we also have partnerships. We have partnerships with financial institutions. And we've talked about the 95% coverage, but we also have over 20,000 financial partners that, that we connect with in a very meaningful way to deliver benefit. And we've introduced Turbo and Mint as a consumer finance platform. That all sits within our ecosystem. And with that ecosystem, connected with being an AI-driven expert platform, we can do some amazing things. So let's talk about how we're going to apply that in order to win, in order to make a difference in the lives of our customers. Our first objective is to extend the lead in DIY. Extend the lead in DIY means that we want to revolutionize the speed to benefit. We want to revolutionize the speed to benefit, which is related to getting to a taxes are done experience with no friction and no effort. And to do that, we're going to leverage data and artificial intelligence driven experiences in order to remove that friction as we build confidence. That's how we're going to extend the lead in DIY. We also intend to transform the assisted category to penetrate that $20 billion of TAM and to address needs of our 86 million assisted filers that currently are filing with others. We're going to do that by connecting people to experts and connect those experts to people. In effect, building a virtual workforce platform that from that platform, we'll be able to add tremendous benefit to our customer lives, specifically and probably primarily get into a taxes are done experience with complete confidence. That will be revolutionary in the market. And we're starting to see those results. This will transform the way people think about doing taxes. We'll talk later about the TAM and why that's so significant, but that's the second part of our strategy. Our third objective is to disrupt traditional consumer finance. Obviously, when you hear about those results of the pain points that exist and that have been around for our customers for, year, for, for forever, <laughs> um, whatever's going on in the system, the financial system isn't working on their behalf. It's just not working. We can do better. Our intent is to take the assets we have in our ecosystem, our capabilities that we derive from being an AI-driven expert platform, and put that to work for our customers. So we are creating a platform, of, which essentially is a marketplace that's driven by connecting our customers to financial partners and institutions that are able to deliver amazing benefits that help them re-engineer their financial life. That's our third objective. And eventually, when we get to these become more mature, we see opportunities that, because this is a global problem, it's not just a US and Canada problem. Now, before we go further into that strategy, let's set a little context around the industry that we compete in. 
we're going to start with the view of the tax industry. So in the tax industry, we, sh we show this every year. You'll see this past year, there's 155 million IRS um, tax returns. Our goal is to focus on growing our share of those total IRS returns rather than focusing on just the do-it-yourself space. You know, th this is another example of a mindset shift. We said we fall in love with the problem, not solution. And the problem that we fell in love with for years was maximize your refund and enabling you to do your taxes yourself because that was so important. But the reality of it is there's over 86 million fathers out there that don't want to do the taxes themselves. Their problem isn't about ease. Their problem is about lack of confidence. Our responsibility as a category champion is to, grow the, um, is to grow the category, to grow the number of fathers that can leverage technology to have an effortless experience and when they have total com complete confidence that they got the biggest refund possible and that refund they put to work in their financial life to deliver the maximum benefit. So the responsibility of championing the growth of the category, as I think about this year, looking forward, Number one, there are, there are four things we need to focus on. There still is going to be a lingering effect and impact from tax reform. The confusion, questions, and opportunities. And so it's important for us to not forget that and to make sure that we as a leadership brand will continue to provide the access to assistance to help people navigate that change and start to re-optimize their financial life. The second thing we need to do is because we've launched this new hybrid category, and we expect competitors will continue to develop, potentially follow the approach that we're taking, it's important we drive awareness of that, we improve that experience, and we continue to make dramatic, innovative improvements for both the, um, for both the pros as well as our customers. The other thing that we're driving, as you know, we've talked a lot about AI-driven experiences. The reality of it is we can deliver on a taxes are done vision. We can deliver that once we start to leverage the ecosystem we have, the AI driven experiences that, that we can bring to market and deliver a much more personalized tax experience. We believe that will help us drive growth in the category. And then finally, our ability not only to focus on the average customer, the average consumer, but think about the fastest growing segments that are underdeveloped for us, self-employed, our Latinx customers, even some of our millennial, emerging millennial investors, those kind of segments, when you get closer to them, you see unique opportunities to solve some of their problems uniquely in a way to drive category growth. So that's the way that we view the landscape and how we intend to grow the category. One thing that's another big opportunity for us to grow our business is to optimize our funnel. So what you see in our funnel here is that we have 99 people that visit us, 99 million, thank goodness, 99 million people that, that visit us. However, however, you know, many of them, only 42 million or so, go on to actually truly consider and then file with us. This last year was 45 million. When you think of those that actually file with us, only 32 million of those actually go on to, to, to complete. So what's important on the funnel is that we need to figure out how to drive more traffic. We need to figure out how do we actually drive greater consideration, more conversion, greater levels of retention, and greater levels of delight. The good news this last year is, is that we're able to grow our retention by two points, um, but there's still opportunity for us to optimize the way the experiences of our customers. That's one way to grow is by optimization. The other way to grow is for us to innovate and penetrate underdeveloped markets. In this case, it's the TAM related to the assisted consumer tax market, the $20 billion opportunity, where we today currently only have about 28% share of the returns and only 12% share of the revenue that actually happens in that category. We see opportunities to penetrate that category with TurboTax Live and significantly increase our share of both returns as well as revenue. The other part of the business the growth strategy goes into how do we think about growth. When you look at the chart on the right, what you'll see here is that we have a history. We have a history where we've accelerated recently 
our ability to innovate at the high end, to innovate at the high end by going after underserved customers where I like to say is where complexity lives and friction still exists. That's, the, that's at the higher end of the market. And as we develop better solutions like TurboTax self-employed coupled with QuickBooks self-employed, that enables us to penetrate and drive growth at the higher end of the market. But also important is that we, is that we grow on the lower end of the market, that we serve those problems and those pain points that we've talked about. We've done that with innovating around our totally free offering that we started years ago. And our ability to not only grow that, but grow that at an accelerated rate as we innovate at the top end of the market allows us to have a steady increase in an accelerated expansion of ARPC, our average revenue per customer or per return. So the thing I want, to want you to see here is that I've learned over the seven years that I've been here that to be successful in this business, you can't walk, you have to run. You have to run hard, you have to run hard towards innovation. And we've learned how to, to run and chew gum at the same time. So with that, we'll transition to what does that look like as we apply going forward. So extending our lead in DIY tax prep, I shared with you a lot of the numbers in terms of the opportunity, but what about the proof points? Are we making progress? We feel good about our progress. Number one is that we've added over 2 million new self-employed filers and Latinx filers last year. We're proud of that, yet we see many, you know, a significant opportunity to grow. The other thing we're proud of is this last year, we had over 13 million filers that paid us absolutely nothing. 13 million filers that paid us absolutely nothing, which is two million more, a two million increase over the prior year. Why do we care about that? We care about that because those filers, they haven't paid us anything. However, they have big problems, they have big opportunities, and so therefore, it's a very important part of our market. And we'll talk a little bit later of how they fit into our strategic lens of the market, view of the market. So beyond that, one of the things that we mentioned before is AI-driven experiences. When you apply it the correct way, you can actually reduce the time it takes to file. You can reduce the friction. We've done that with 8% of our filers that can file in less than 30 minutes. And we have many followers on our platform that could actually file in a much faster period of time, below 15 minutes. Beyond that, we actually have in DIY by apply, applying personalization to our experiences, we've increased our retention by four points over the last two years. Four points, pretty significant given that opportunity. And then finally, as we pursue AI-driven expertise in order to personalize our experience, we now have 52% of our self-help answers personalized. I think the last time was around 30% we shared that with you. We're making progress, we're making progress. We can extend our lead in this core business by revolutionizing the speed to benefit. Transforming the assisted category. Again, $20 billion of TAM, 86 million consumers that actually prefer expertise and are seeking out experts and we have an opportunity to make and transform that experience. Over 10 million of those um, assisted seekers, they churn between filing methods each year, 10 million. There's an opportunity to, to, have to develop and deliver a better experience, a better solution. The proof points, we're early in this journey, too early to, to conclude that we've got it all cracked and figured out. We have opportunities to improve the experience. However, we have doubled the number of self-employed filers on our TurboTax Live platform. We have a 4x increase on the number of Latinx filers now filing on our TurboTax Live platform. 70% of the new filers that we've grown came from a prior year assisted tax method. So we're growing in the category, we're bringing new users. This is a two-sided platform. One of the big things we focused on is our ability to improve both the consumer experience and the pro experience at the same time. We saw a 52% increase in our pro NPS versus the prior year. That means we're making the pro experience amazing. And why that is important is because when a customer who needs assistance connects with our pro, we see their conversion rate go up by 32 points. 
32 points. That's dramatic in increase. Now, what, so what's our goal? Our goal is to make sure our, customer, our pros spend more time connecting with our customers rather than navigating the back office elements of trying to be a pro on our platform. That's what we focused on last year. And by doing that, we've increased our net promoter and they actually spent much more time serving customers. Disrupting consumer finance. That ambition, it's earlier, it's very early in that journey, but we know we feel compelled to actually have to extend our relationships beyond just tax. Why, how can we do that? First of all, we do process and deliver $82 billion in refunds. We have $180 billion of paychecks that we issue in our ecosystem through QuickBooks. We now have 37 million registered users on our platform, 4 million who are active. Now we've just gotten started. You know, we're 18 months into this in earnest. The opportunity is massive. The proof points that we're making progress are pretty impressive as well. You know, whenever we actually um, personalize an offer by pre-qualification, we see a 10x improvement in conversion. A 10x improvement in conversion. Whenever we personalize an offer, not just by pre-qualifying, but actually enable consumers to pre-fill on our partner platforms, what you see is a 5x increase in account creation. That's our partner benefit. So ultimately, we also have expanded our partners. Now we have over 39 partners, whether it be for credit cards, whether it's for lending, whether it's for mortgage, um, 39 partners that we partner with to deliver consumer benefit. And that's now over 100 plus offers that we put in the market. Now I mentioned we're early in the journey, but by maniacally focusing on the customer problem and leveraging our ecosystem and our capabilities to do good, for our customers, we can actually deliver amazing results. So let me put this all together because we've shown the pieces, but it's not like it's three separate businesses. The reality is when you serve 50 million filers, every single filer has their own journey. And that journey looks different year to year. And if you wanna know how, does all, how do these things fit together to deliver customer benefit, and what's the revenue model, the business model that supports all three of these strategies together, I want to walk through a few of these examples, just so you can see how the pieces connect. In this example, you have Emma, who is a recent college grad, and she's gone into the workplace, and she's become successful. She's becoming more and more successful, and as she starts to become more, for, more and more successful, she decides to get into investing. And with investing, she joins TurboTax, and she moves up from being a deluxe customer to now being a premier customer. And actually, because of that, she also cares a little bit more about getting priority access to experts. And she cares a little bit more about things like audit defense, so she actually adds our max bundle. That next year, she's actually become more successful. Her lives become more complex. And she's now sought out Premier, TurboTax Premier Live. So now she's looking for that live assistance. And because she's trying to find ways to maximize um, her income and, and her income and, you know, and her monthly balances, she decides to go ahead and refinance her student loans. And you can see her lifetime value for us increased dramatically in each year. And that's just one of the stories. There are other stories here that are very similar. When you actually look at Tracy, she, she paid us absolutely zero dollars. She was one of those, fuss, those customers that we said pay us absolutely nothing. So in the first year, that was the case. Even in the second year, she did not pay anything to us for filing taxes. However, since she doesn't have a checking account and she wants more access to her money faster, she put all of her deposit on her turbo card. And then that next year, not only that, she's gotten married, her and her husband now have filed itemized deductions, so now she's in deluxe. And then they go collective together to actually go through and find a better credit card um, in order to manage their, their personal finances. The stories go on and on and on. These are three of the stories, but I'll tell you there are over 30 million of those. And those stories create massive opportunity for a win-win-win. 
We can win by helping the customers achieve what they're looking for. We can win by helping our financial partners achieve what they're looking for and ultimately our shareholders as well. So with that, the last thing I'd like to reiterate is that we shared last year our forward-looking guidance. Our long-term expectation is for us to continue to deliver somewhere between 8 to 12% growth. I'll remind you last year was 11%, and um, we're excited about the progress we're making.